Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nano Micro Ladder International webinar on Research Cloud Live. Today, our topic is Nano Micro World Beauty and Fundamentals. This is Zhi Hu from Tianjin University. It is my honor to be here. Now, we'd like to invite Ya Fei Zhang, Professor of Shanghai Jiao Tong University and Editor in Chief for Nano Micro Letters, to give us the opening remark. Let's welcome. Thank you, Professor Hu Shi, for the brief introduction. Dear academician, Professor Zhong Li Wang, and all distinguished plenty speakers. There are our colleagues and the audience from the whole world. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to welcome you to our Nano Micro Latest webinar series. I'm Ya Fei Zhang, the editor in chief of Nano Micro Latest from Shanghai Jiao University. I would like to give a brief opening remark. This webinar series are launched and organized by Nano Micro Letters, an online open access peer reviewed international journal. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our honor to have five leading scientists Professor Jun Li Wang, Professor Hai Yong Li, Professor Yang Lin Hu, Professor Shan Qing Zhang, and Professor Zhi Chuan Xu to share and their understandings and the key findings of the beauty and the fundamental. Uh, meanwhile, he was a big map of their field. I'm sure you will be benefit from the webinar and I look forward to learning about the outcome. Thank you. Thank Professor John for his introduction. Now we'd like to start the lecture part. Today, our first speaker will be Professor Zhong Ling Wang from Beijing Institute of Nano Energy and Nano Systems, and also Professor of Georgia Tech. Professor Zhong Ling Wang is the High Tower Chair in Material Science and Engineering and Regents Professor at Georgia Tech. He's also the Founding Director of Beijing Institute of Nano Energy and Nano Systems. Dr. Wang pioneered the nano generators from fundamental science to techno technological applications. His research on self-powered nanosystems has inspired the worldwide efforts in academia and industry for studying energy for micro nanosystems. He coined and pioneered the fields of piezotronics and piezotronics <laughs> for the third generation semiconductors. One is ranked the 15th among the 100,000 scientists across all fields worldwide. His Google Scholar citation is over 238,000 with an edge index of 240. Now, let's welcome Professor Zhongling Wang to give us the lecture about the triple electric nanogenerators for self power systems and not scare blue energy. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Let me get this uh, minimized size. And uh, I'd like to thank the invitation from Micro Nano Letters. And this journal is grow very uh, great and uh, reach an uh, impact factor almost 10. So it's make a great contribution to the society and community. So I'd like to use this next 30 minutes to give you a brief talk on our uh, trouble electric nano generator for self power system and large scale blue energy. And uh, when you talk about energy, there's a lot of need. I also serve as the chief editor of Nano Energy, this journal. And uh, uh, as we march, the society march from the Asian time to today, the energy need uh, changed too. We still rely on the traditional energy based on coal and oil. Each change in the energy revolutionized our society. So as we enter the 21st century, there's a lot of new challenges and new opportunities. So what are the new opportunity, new challenge related to energy? The, our traditional way to deliver power is through the central power plant, through the cables to factory, 
to schools, to home, to the city. And we also have the storage units, which storage the energy for portable electronics, for mobile electronics. So these are the major two approaches for power delivery. But once we enter to the, furthermore, the people's demand, demands, the society's needs are increased dramatically, especially in the area of handheld uh, hand electronics based uh, devices. Uh, this large increase, so called big data, you know, we have a data, where the data come from is from those devices. With smaller size, huge numbers, mobile and wireless. So how do we meet the energy of those devices is what we are looking at. So if you look at this energy delivery here, is basically look, we look at the from the traditional power plant to your home. So this is a cable power delivery from concentrated energy to fix the sites, order the delivery. But as we into the internet of things, mobile phone based electronics, there's a lot of distributed energy. So from concentrated energy to distributed energy, from order the application to some sort of disorder, from wired to wireless. So this huge numbers increase, increase every day. So therefore you can view this one as analogy to the entropy in, in, in chemical physics. And uh, the entropy for energy, energy distribution is very different from what we used to do. So how do we meet this uh, daily in, uh, increased demands, society and whole global? So we introduced this so powered system 2006, 15 years ago, I introduced so powered system. Can we make this device not only uh, sense the environment signal, but also process and to send the signal wirelessly to wherever it should reach? And this device can be self-charging without an external power source. That's called soul power system. And that's today become very much popularly utilized in many fields. Okay, so today I just present one of our major inventions made in 2011, and it's called Trouble Nano Generator, called TNG. Uh, this is one of the mode of TNG called contact separation mode. Two dielectric materials contact the separation and the surface being charged. Then if the distance between the two dielectric be enhanced, increased the electron flow from one electrode to the other. So this is the way we have been talking about the energy generation, right? Energy generation here. So we knew this one, but what's the fundamental? What's the application and what are the challenges? So let's look at it. If you want to see the advantage of the traditional power generator with the new generator, what's the advantage? What's the key difference? Okay, it's not only just the choice of materials. It's way much beyond that, go to physics level. So this is the, the metal rod called uh, electromagnetic flux. And this is the uh, contact gentrification between two dielectrics that give you the power generation. Let's see the difference. Let me just show you the difference. Can okay, you see? This runs at a very fast pace. This runs at a very slow pace. Okay. Let me introduce to you. So this, why this have to run at a fast pace? Because the power output is low. If you run a slow pace, you cannot drive. This. But this one is slow pace, but the power is enough for those lights. The key difference is this. See, this is the frequency dependence. At low frequency, the TNG output is a lot higher than the electromagnetic generator. So what is this low frequency? Is the frequency in our daily life. So TNG is a very powerful technology for harvesting irregular, low frequency, distributed energy at a high efficiency. Okay, so now come to the basic. When you talk about these things, what's the basic science? If you talk about trouble electricity, everybody knows it, but not everyone even understand the fundamentals of trouble electricity. For example, in the textbook you write, metal is a, is a, is a plastic rod, rub on the fur, you get the electrostatic charge. The question is why? Why this negative charge, why this other positive charge? So this is the fundamental ones. So we, pro we have been studied for the last few years and we propose some models. Let me just review one model for this. Because the trouble electricity occurs for any materials, any phase, solid, liquid, 
uh, gas phases. So it's need a generic model. So we propose this two atomic wave function overlap model or electron cloud overlap model. So this is one atom. This is the other atom. If the separation between the two is slightly light, uh, larger, so there's no overlap with the electron cloud. Now, if you bring the two together, the barrier, you see, the barrier used to separate the transfer electron from here to here is lower. So electron can transfer from one side to the other one. If you do an animation, it's look at that like this. This is the bonding atom, uh, uh, electrons here, this bonding atom here. Then you bring together, and then new potential become lower the barrier, the electron transfer can occur. So this electron transfer occurs, this is the trouble electricity. You can use this model to explain for um, uh, solids, liquid, gas, or, or, or a liquid and a gas, okay? So in this such a case, electron remains on one atom, and the other one will have positive charge, the other one negative charge. And this is the case we have been observed from in for many materials. So this kind of transition, we have studied a lot in this regard. So I'll just briefly tell you because of time limitation. So used to be live, so what is the tribal electricity? Is the type of content electrification in which certain material become electrically charged when they are physically contact. This definition is partially right, is partially wrong. The partial right is that it just give you two material contact give you, but did not explain why. So the definition is contact electrification is a quantum mechanical electron transfer process that occurs for any materials in any states, liquid, solid, or gas, in any application environment, and a wide range of application range temperature. We found up to 400 degrees C it still ex existed. So we complicate the situation of trouble electricity and the contact electrification. This is a scientific term. This is an engineering term. We just use tribology convoluted with the, the scientific term become an engineering operation. So therefore we used to do not understand this very well is because we complicate the process. Okay, so this is what is happening. The second one, if you have this electrostatic charge, how come it make electron to flow? Used to be you have a metal rod cut magnetic flux, the Lorentz force drive electron to flow, you see conduction current. But in our case it's different. This goes to Maxwell's equation. Much different from this. Maxwell equation was proposed for electromagnetic wave. But we expand the Maxwell equation for energy. So how? If you look at this displacement current term, this Maxwell introduced in 1861. This is the standard term. This is the time variation of magnetic field, electric field give you the current. It's not a direct flow of current. So this one, if you see, in our case, this medium polarization term missed one term. What term? If you have a surface charge due to trouble electricity, you have a natural contribution to this polarization, or polarization here, even there's no presence with electric field. So we added one term in the Maxwell equation.
Dear audience, we are experiencing some uh, technical problems at this moment. So I guess there is something in, wrong with the internet connection from Professor Zhongming Wang's side. So we are dealing with this. Please keep your patience. Thank you. So why do we still call nano generator, which was first introduced use nano wires for power generation, but now is displacement current driven power generator technology. And for piezoelectric case, for tropology case, it's all inclusive. So we call nano generator, which stands out of the traditional power generator technology. So nano generator is a field that uses a displacement current as the driving force for effective converter mechanical energy into electric power. Even use nanomaterial or you don't use nanomaterial, it doesn't matter. So therefore it's a physics change as we are speaking. So what, what fundamental contribution? The fundamental contribution is this, is modified displacement current. Originally Maxwell used this predicted electromagnetic wave and it contributed huge to today's society. But now if you add an additional term is the power generation of nano generator here, which is the energy and the sensors. And we use this one expand Maxwell equation here. So basically this term is low frequency. This term is high frequency. Two are normally do not couple, but now if you couple them together, you can have a lot of new things to happen in the future. But today we just totally total, total talk about this term. So this gives you the basic theory of this theoretical framework. So I just, to be brief, okay? So now when you talk about the TNG, what are the applications here? Let me give you some uh, introduction here. The first one is use human activity for power generation. Okay, if you put in a shoe insole here, use a little tubular structure here, you can get a lot of power out of this. At least it's enough for some small electronics here. So you can use conventional materials to for as a power converter use human motion here. You can also make so powered electronic papers. The paper can be electronic power. You can see this one. Let me show you the, you can use this one to drive the, the uh, change the color of the paper as, uh, as you, your know, physical motion here. So you can in one, imagine you can future you have a t-shirt and a t-shirt can change color when, when you are jogging. See the color changed here. That's uh, so one more time and then you can get another one. Okay. Become red. The other one. I can make this color switches. You see, just once the color switch from one side to the other side here, you can make an automatic color change and also with the green and the other colors too. See, okay. Just physical motion made it change. Okay, let me just show you the slides here. Okay. And then you can also have other devices as well. So try pop, uh, electronic paper based device here. Okay, let me see this one. So you can make all kinds of good things from this things here. You can use the material choice can be very diverse. Use a silicon. You can have multiple twist ones here. It's become a little power generator and a sensor. You put it on a person's arm, you tap at any specific point, you have a signal being received here. This is for sensors. You can also put on the floor, some people's free walking, you can have a power generation here. Okay. So this is all needed, not only for power generation, but for Thinking sensors. Medical purposes, you can use heart beating, heart beating of small rat to drive a pacemaker. And recently we made this one to be used this one to drive a, a, a large, uh, the basic uh, human pacemaker. And we make use large animals. Uh, this, is the, this is a big pig, 50 kilogram pig for the, for the experiment. We found that the breathing of this pig the motion that drive this uh, TNG can drive the pacemaker. So this for the first time, it changes a lot. And this one can also send signals. You not only can, can detect 
the the the, the, the power of the pacemaker, but also can detect the signals in vivo and uh, inside the body. We have reached almost half microjoule our power output, but the minimum energy driver pacemaker is 0.37. So we already go through uh, beyond the the threshold. So this is a very exciting news, and our effort for 12 years finally we reached the possibility for cell powered uh, pacemaker. And this the uh, drug delivery uh, with use TNG, without use TNG, put on skin, skin, you can infiltrate the drug into deep tissues here. You see, the efficiency in, enhanced by a factor of five if you use our TNG. Just physical motion change the effect delivery of drugs by a factor of five. Fabric, a lot of people do fabric studies here. How can you make a fabric uh, smart? Probably electricity is the very basic effect. You can make it, this one into different design here, and you can also make this one into a, a power generator. You can also make this one into a, a sensors here. So our group was the first to demonstrate fabric-based, fiber-based uh, nano generator and the sensors here. So you see trouble electricity is very popular in the fabric uh, st st structure here. So this is the fiber-based ones. Raindrop. 2014, we demonstrated for the first one use a range of power generation. In the recent years, a lot, lot, many groups studied strain drop, but we were the first one to demonstrate this one back because raindrop have uh, the charge on the surface and also charge exchange with the surface here. When drop hit the, the, the substrate, you can have a, a charge exchange. And then when the drop float off, you have a power generator. You can see this. This is the power generator here. And this is the lights here. Use this flashlight here. You put on so here you see the light flash okay so then turn this off so you can see this one is raindrop as a power generator here a lot of interest study recently here you can use it as a as a model okay this is the electrostatic model you can use the tng to drive electrostatic model because tng have a high output voltage and this is very unique for for electrostatic application you can see this is a sliding on the right hand side, and this model runs at a thirteen hundred round per minute so for medical purposes for some of the cell powered model sensors here. Okay, many people work on storage, energy storage, but for our systems it's different because the energy from the environment is variable; it's faster or slower, frequency variable. Ampere value. Through our TNG, we can make into power, but it's power is power. So we have through a power management, then through a storage unit for regulated application here. So we call self-charging power unit. It's a unit that can house energy, manage energy, and storage energy, and then you can utilize the energy. So it's different from battery. Battery is just a storage, uh, a simple storage without the previous two components. The three components are all equally important for this device application here. So this is the reason we make the power management because the TNG has a high output voltage, lower output current. Our purpose is to, to lower the voltage and raise the current. So you can see this one. You can see this. This is the power. This is the TNG and this is the power uh, uh, regulation unit and this is the output. You can be a, 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 a effect user. We already reached eighty five percent. Of this effective power management here okay so this is the utilize for power management system for self-charging power unit in an environment you have a lot of sensors you have wind sensors you have chemical sensors you have gas sensors the fire protection sensors. why they distribute can you use the wind to power this yes we can use this tom shape this is a polymer when wind go through this one this tom oscillates you see early day we show this one is when you blow this, the wind go through here. So we make this a few units stacked together. And then when wind go through here, the power generated here can be integrated and send a signal wireless. We already achieved at a wind speed of about four and a half meters. And two and a half kilometers away, we send a signal once every 18 minutes at a, at a radio frequency. So we can do wireless communication here you can imagine if you have water quality tracking environmental monitoring many monitoring you make a, a map across the field use self-power technology here 
You can prevent nature disaster. You can put in the ocean, use the floating water to power a light, uh, a light power, a light pole. You can also use this one for chemical sensors here. You can, you can do this one. Use the floating waters to detect chemistry of the water and send a signal wireless to, to the side here. You can also use this one for, for a, a variety of, uh, like, a earthquake predictions. Land sliding predictions. This is the land sliding prediction here. In some areas, land start sliding occurs at midnight. Nobody knows about it, but you can do this as a warning system. Use our TNG as a trigger, as a sensor. So power sensor is another application for TNG. For example, you need, when you play ping pong ball, if the ping pong ball strike the table, you can strike on the top edge is a valid ball. But if you strike the side of the, 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 the ping pong table is an invalid Ball. Let me show this one. You can see our people demo use. You see the ping pong ball strike here is a valid ball. We detect the signal. And then if you the ping pong ball just touch the, the, the side rim, you get another signal which is not an invalid ball here. So basically for sports, TNG has a huge application. And this is just use because you can use it any material you want, any any structure you want for sports, for volleyball, basketball, for tennis, whatever, you can use as a sensor and a trigger, okay? This is for typing. You just make a keyboard to record your typing. When you type a text, the, the way, not only record the alphabet you type, but also record the way you type, the, the time interval between the two and the difference between the two. And you see this one, we can identify who type it, who type it. So not only just the, 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 the input information is correct, but who type is this? Is our people demonstrate have a six figures. This is a six figures. So you can use, use the finger, put it in. The computer recognize who type it in. The reason they recognize is use the smart keyboard divided based on TNG. If you go to the library, you have thousand books. If somebody touch a book, you don't know. Okay. Even use a video, it's very hard to, to surveil such a large number. But we can, uh, for each book, we can build a, a, a TNG here. And when anybody touch this one, there's a signal sent to the receiver. We can know which book was touched. Let me show you this one. So you see, this book is being removed. Another book is moved to so this for cell powered sensors here. It, this is, a, a, can really useful for documentation tracking because the reason, if you, even you have this over there, somebody touch it, you never know. Uh, uh, even use a battery to charge it, the battery way gone without power because maintains the power uh, is very difficult and uh, resource uh, consuming. And we can make this one for robotic, soft robotics. Remember, soft robotics need power, need this, this sensors here. You need to make, so our TNG can make a soft robotics have a very unique sensor, okay? For the uh, blood pressure measurement, if you put on this one, the risk here, you not only measure the pulse, but you also measure blood pressure. And uh, you see many people used to wear this uh, eye watch and I think, I don't see very many get any popular because I had one, I only wear it for two weeks, I just get rid of it. You always need to charge, you always have some other things that didn't measure the, uh, accurately, so I didn't wear it at, at all. So this one, you can see that, these things can be measured your pulse. This is for medical hair. This is the care. So not only just many the pulse, number of pulse, but also the pressure, blood pressure. And robotics. You can use a paper-based hearing aid put in the robotics. You can have a microphone as a music recorder. And then you play back, see what it is. Look, let me show you if you can hear me. Can you hear the music? I hope you can hear the music. Okay, this is, the, this is the traditional music here. Use this as a microphone, paper-based TNG as a microphone to record it. Then, then you play back. This is the playback without any digital filtering, any other uh, data processing, just a native play. You can see 90% of accuracy of sounds has to be pro pre preserved. This is not only for that, can be for uh, robotics communication. A human with robotic communication. Use, remember, use a paper-based TNG as a microphone, which you never have been able to do before. Okay. Voice recognition. They didn't recognize because the 
group. This is the Hong Hong Yi come over. You can see voice recognition utilize our TNG based microphone, which is very interesting here. Okay, blue energy. What is blue energy? Energy in the ocean is huge. Just the coast area around the globe is 75 terawatt. This is four times of the energy power the whole world. But how is such energy extremely difficult, expensive, difficult environment, high cost, and corrosions are very difficult to operate and low efficiency because you rely on classical technology. How about our new technology? So how do we do it? So we have not utilized energy off by the ocean. So how do we do this? So we make a sphere and a sphere. Inside the sphere, we have another sphere. So if you know water wave, if this wobbling back and forth, you can see one back and forth, power generate. The reason because this ball rolling back and forth, back and forth, contact separation, contact separation, get, get uh, a power generation here. So this is a way to produce power. Just one ball. Okay, if you have, how do you, you see the, the way because the tricking frequency is slow, but how can you enhance the tricking efficiency? We use this pendulum structure. So it's striking this once, they can oscillate 80 seconds without stop. Without this one, we can already achieve 28% of energy conversion efficiency, which is far beyond whatever any existing technology for mechanical energy conversion. You can see this in the water. And this is the light wind. You can have the heavy wind, but for light wind, you cannot do it. But the, our technology can do it. So basically, offer a brand new, brand new approach, a groundbreaking technology for half the wind energy and the water wave energy. Complete thinking, complete different thinking. If you put this one, regard the depth of the ocean, regard the low frequency, we can do it. We can do it. So how do we do it? We put on the surface, you can see, you know, water, each is flocking, and we can put it on the surface of water, make it networking. 3D networking, you can have the energy. This can offer a brand new approach for half the energy from wind, from water wave, from anything, regardless of depth, regardless of distance, it make it possible. So we, this one can be integrated. So this is called blue energy. So fundamental was the difference. Always I emphasize fundamental things. You have to be physically different. This is the electromagnetic generator. The power output is the square of the frequency. Use the magnets, coils. This, this is the traditional technology. You cannot change it over 180 years. What we do is here is linear with frequency. So therefore, we use polymer materials, organic materials for mechanical energy harvesting. Fundamental difference is that low frequency electromagnetic generator has no output, very little. But ours is many times higher. So basically, we saw, we, this is the key application. We can do the things traditional technology cannot do. So therefore, at low frequency, we have the unbeatable advantage in comparison to the classical technology. So we are not talking about replacement, but we can do things classic technology cannot do. Okay, so this is the physical difference here. Then we, we, we make this one. You can see this is the power generator here. You can see the, in the water, okay. You can put it in the, in the water density you can simulate the, in the water flow here. So all this experiment being carried out. So it's very interesting, very different from classical way to do things, okay. So the way I present to you is of a new approach for this one. So we hope this is of a new way for future of world energy. When we run on fossil energy, what are we going to do? Okay, I think as long as the, the, there's wind uh, uh, around in the ocean, there's vast energy we can harvest. So if we can expand this technology, we have provided an unprecedented approach for solid world energy at large. Okay, so I think my talk is short because only 35 minutes. I cannot talk very much in detail, but I hope to we'll give you a brief review. First one, What's the fundamental of contact electrification? We have many papers in this regard, which is the question remain for 2,600 years old. Very old physics phenomena, but not clearly understood until now. So therefore, 
It has quantum mechanical electron transition there. So this is the first thing I present. The second one, what's the difference of our TNG compared to te class technology is Maxwell's displacement current. is not the traditional conduction current. That's the difference. So people always ask me, say, tell me why you still call nano generate? So when we propose nano generate, we use nano wires. We use nano wires as as the as the source for power. If you can say you have a nano or nano wires, use the EFM ticket tip of the trigger, you get power. We call nano generate. This was 2005, 2006. But that time we did not understand the fundamentals of physics of the power generation for our technology. Until recently, we understood it is Maxwell's discipline card. Therefore, so nano generate is not is a field that utilizes Maxwell display current as the driving force for converting random low quality distributed mechanical energy to electric power. So that's the definition of nano generator. You you can use nano materials for better uh, performance, but you don't have to. Okay, so therefore, just like a battery, you never call nano battery because battery was created at large. But now use nano materials. Why don't you call nano battery? Is basically. The principle of nano uh, of the battery remains the same. You just use nano material for better performance. I showed four major applications: micro nano power source, so power sensor. Remember, this one have a lot of uh, commercial opportunity, and uh, also large scale blue energy. We have an idea for solar world energy uh, at large, and of course, this have a long way to go. As now uh, around the globe, I have fifty four countries and regions, uh, seven hundred units. 4,300 scientists working in this field. This is basically on the SCA data search. So there's a big field being formed. So as we do nano for many years, nano is beautiful, but most importantly, nano has to be useful. We cannot just uh, carry out beautiful, beautiful. Yes, it's beautiful, but it has to solve the world problem to some extent. And uh, we need must think in that regard because nano has been around for 30, 20, 30 years or so. I remember so around 1990s when I was graduate 1987. It was not called nano. That can call small, small particle uh, until like a carbon nano tube. Small, they call nano nano becomes more fashion. It's about 30 years or so. So now we need to think: What's the major problem you can solve? What are the unique thing you can do? If you continue to call this nano for another 20 years, nobody will be care about that time we call nano or not. Let's show it works for us. It's it can solve real problem. I think for the whole community, micro nano community, we have to keep this in mind all the time. So nano generate have four major applications: micro nano power source, so power sensors, a sensor which may not need the energy to work, blue energy at large. Lastly, high voltage for that. So I think there's a lot of possibility ahead of us, and I hope many young people can join this field from material science, chemistry, physics. Electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, you know, biological engineer is a diverse field. Need everybody's input and contribution. Thank you very much for the invitation, and uh, I hope I give you a brief uh, overview of what we have been doing for the last few years. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wang, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, Mauro's uh, talk today. And uh, actually, we've got some um, questions from raised from different platform. And we are collecting these questions, and uh, we are also uh, expecting more questions. Uh, now we uh, we have some questions here, so I'd like to show. Uh, I just pick up a few to um, give it pass it to Professor Wang. So the first question is: uh, Is there any limitation for the future application of TNG? and uh, blue energy? Uh, every technology has its advantage and disadvantage. Our major challenge you face now is the durability and uh, uh, robustness of the TNG. Because this uses the organic materials, sometimes you can use the inorganic materials, but uh, the, the system may not as stable as the class electromagnetic generator uh, we use now. So we are working right now how to improve the durability and stability problem. 
So that's the number one challenge we'll make. For, for, for a micro, small energy, we always face the, the, the needs of every increased power density and the power. So therefore, people always need more power, more power. So we are uh, trying very hard to enhance the efficiency for the harvesting. I will also integrate TNG with other energy harvest technology, like, for example, like a solar cell into a hybrid cell. For a large scale blue energy, we just at the very beginning because this one need a very large project to do it. We, we currently don't have that project to do it. We just test in, 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 in a lab, but we need to experiment in a real environment because then you can work on a corrosion problem, the co communications, integration of powers between one unit with the other ones, and then how the power be in fact utilized. So this is a big field to be, util to be developed in the next uh, five to 10 years or so. Okay, perfect. So uh, the next question is about the environment. Okay, everybody talks about energy and environment. So the second question is about environment. Someone asked, is the, will the application of this blue energy affect the climate as it involves some interaction with the ocean, like the tidal movement? So, mm. there any uh, effect be there? Oh yeah, okay. So let me tell uh, two parts. Uh, because the, the classical technology use coal and oil, which could bring a lot of climate change because majorly the, 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 uh, the ozone layer damage as well as carbon monoxide, uh, the emission, uh, in our uh, carbon dioxide emission, uh, around the globe. So global warming is, is happening. And because we burn a lot of oil and coal, where's the heat go in our environment? It cannot be displayed in the space that much. So global warming is happening. So now, if you use the <coughs> ocean energy, which you don't need to burn this coal and oil every day, you can save a lot of global warming, number one. Number two, you, you're concerned about the marine life. You see, when you build an ocean, you don't need to build a network, cover a large area, leave no space for animal to live. You can build a, a patch. Between the patch, have a separation, give animal enough room to live. That is how, how large the area you need to solve the world energy. I did a theoretical estimation. For an area of 400 kilometer by 400 kilometer, roughly speaking, is the size of the state of Georgia, all the size of the Sandung province. 10 meters of depth of water, you make it into 3D. The total output power is the world total power consumption. Then you say, how large is 400 by 400 kilometer area on the ocean? It's three parts of 10,000. Three parts of 10,000 of the surface area of the earth. Very little bit. You can build this one in an area that no ship, no marine, no, no not very much human activity, very complicated geographic configurations. That's that's good enough. So therefore, it have some environmental impact, but not as big as the, the fossil energy cost to us as we we are now. Okay. Uh, third question is yes. Uh, everyone knows that everybody pay attention to the utilization of sustainable energies. And we have a um, pretty mature system to incorporate the uh, energy electricity from the wind, from the solar to get into the grid. So what do you think is the challenge for TNG to get energy into the grid? <clears throat> the uh, major challenge for solar and wind is instability. Mm -hmm. I personally believe it's a good supplement to local utilization. But if you use solar and wind energy to grid, it's caused a lot of instability in the grid and a risk. So that's why there's a limitation for both. That's my own opinion. And I personally don't believe the solar and the liquid wind will solve large energy uh, around the globe. It's just a supplement. Okay. Okay. The big question is that how can you get a stable energy? Stable energy. Stable energy, I think ocean energy is stable energy. Let's say water wave in ocean. 
It's day and night. You don't need a gigantic wave. You just need the water wave here, which is very stable. Day and night. It's stable day and night and also around the globe. So therefore, I think if we can utilize that energy, we have a stable energy for, for the future. So this is just my own uh, opinion. Okay, I, I think it's pretty good. So uh, due to the limitation of time for today's event, uh, I will just stop here. So uh, thanks again for uh, today's talk and uh, answering of all these questions. Uh, now uh, we are, um, you can, uh, we are switched to the last talk and uh, okay. thanks again. Thank you very much. Okay. You, you have a good day.